Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 2021 Older New Yorkers Day celebration. My name is Greg Olson, and I'm the director of the New York State Office for Aging. We are so pleased that you are here with your families to join us in this amazing celebration and are able to bring this to you in partnership with Governor Hochul's office, members of the New York State Legislature, the Association on Aging in New York State, and our county offices for the aging and their partners. Started by John F. Kennedy in 1963, the month of May is known nationally as Older Americans Month, where we stop to acknowledge the incredible efforts and diverse contributions older adults make to their families and to their communities across the nation and our great state of New York. But in New York each year, we go a step further and we do something very unique. Working with our 59 county offices for the aging, we honor exceptional individuals nominated by those counties that demonstrate through their actions the spirit of civic engagement volunteerism, and selflessness. These are the individuals that we will honor today. Traditionally, we hold this celebration in May, but due to the pandemic and the extraordinary work of our county partners and not-for-profit partners, we delayed the May celebration and are holding this virtual celebration in November to coincide with National Caregiver Month. There's no better month than to coincide with National Caregiver Month because the volunteers that we honor today are just that, exceptional people, very valuable to family, friends, and community, and our caregivers to their broader community. Those whom we honor today represent a much larger group of older adults across the state that give tirelessly, and you represent them so very well. Your commitment to improving your community and helping your neighbors in whatever capacity is what defines us as New Yorkers, it is what makes us proud to be New Yorkers and to follow in the example that you set. This example is what makes me so proud to emcee this event and to have my children present again this year so that they can understand the value of older adults and their significant contributions. And that is demonstrated again through your selflessness and the difference that you make to real people. It is long past time to stop the stereotypes, the generalizations, the flat out falsehoods and ageism that older adults have been defined for for centuries. I would like to thank Governor Hochul for her friendship, support, and leadership, and she sends her regrets for not being able to join us today. She has participated in this celebration for years, and she sends her profound gratitude to you all for your service. I would also like to thank Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin, who we will hear from in just a few minutes. I'm so pleased now to introduce my children, Samantha Olson and Anya Olson, who have been part of this celebration since they have been very little, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the Star Spangled Banner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the As we start the formal remarks for the celebration, I would like to express our profound gratitude to those who have honored today who have served in our branches of the military. We have individuals that have served in the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. 
Let us pause and pay our respects to those men and women, both past and present, who have served and continue to serve in our armed forces, and thank them for their sacrifices, for defending our way of life, and for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. The 2021 theme of Older Americans Month is Communities of Strength. Older adults have built resilience and strength over their lives through their successes, their failures, joys, and difficulties. Their stories and contributions help to support and inspire others. Communities of strength and the role older people have and continue to play during the pandemic is nothing short of incredible. The service provided helped people get food, get groceries, receive their prescriptions, get to cancer and dialysis treatments, combat social isolation, get vaccines in arms, and so much more. Your value is unmistakable and should never be minimized. You have been nominated by your counties because of the positive impact you have through your giving. And I wanna thank your counties and all the offices for the aging, the directors, their staff, for such a great slate of awardees. You have been nominated because you stand out and because you shine. And as I mentioned, you also represent the hundreds of thousands of other citizens just like you who volunteer their time and energy to programs and services, to creating organizations and fundraising, giving the greatest gift of all, that of your time. The word volunteer cannot fully capture the accomplishments of this incredible group of individuals that are with us today. You are very impressive and you tell the real story of what's good about people, what's good about New York, and again, how valuable you all are to those you touch, to those you serve, to the families and communities and lives that you make better. You committed countless hours of service, most often to multiple organizations, all for the simple goal of helping others and with the desire to make a difference and to give back. You do so without fanfare. You do so not to be thanked or recognized, but you do so because you saw a need, had a passion, wanted to give back, wanted to stay engaged, wanted to make a difference, and you stepped up and you just did it. What you do matters, who you are matters, and your contributions matter, and that's what makes this celebration so special. Among you today are 86 honorees and their families, representing 52 counties across the state of New York, providing volunteer service to over 400 different organizations. You have given more than 2,000 years of service, more than 1 million hours at an economic value of more than $28 million over the lifetime of your service. You have raised 205 children, 309 grandchildren, 99 great-grandchildren, and one great-great-grandchild. Your giving back comes with exceptional life and work experience to apply. You have over 6,000 years of family experience to share along with the thousands of hours of work experience and more than 2,700 years of work experience. Make no mistake about it, older New Yorkers bring enormous intellectual, social, and economic capital to the state of New York. Older New Yorkers and baby boomers make up 63% of all the household income generated in New York State. That's $481 billion a year. You have very high home ownership rates, are supporting schools, local businesses, the local and state economy, and are the number one givers to philanthropy, to organizations, and to volunteering. Your skills are endless and your value is well-defined. It is so well-defined and recognized that states across the country are competing for you because they recognize these contributions. But this celebration is about something bigger, showing the true side of aging and not getting stuck on an artificial number that represents age because the number and how old you are is not what defines you. It's your actions, your passions, your relationships, your commitments, your perseverance, your determination, and your goals that define you. And there's no artificial age or number you can put on that. And it's our job to tell that story, and we do that by highlighting you today. Regardless of where you came from or what your background is, there's a volunteer opportunity waiting and a life that can be changed for the better. You are indeed a diverse group of individuals having worked as nurses, doctors, social workers, teachers, attorneys, engineers, retired office for aging directors, corrections officers, department store owners, postal workers, the, for Niagara Mohawk as a lineman, a bank executive, farmers, scientists, the NYPD, realtors, and more. 
You have chosen to take your work and life skills and experiences and either get involved or remain involved as volunteers for the Kiwanis, Traffic Safety Board, Hospice, Veterans Organizations, Junior Achievement, Urban Scholars Programs, Rural Outreach, League of Women Voters, Public Health, Firefighters, EMS, Toys for Tots, and so much more. How vast is your reach though and how important is your time? Consider, across New York State, there are almost 1 million people over the age of 55 who contribute 495 million hours of service every year at an economic value of $13.8 billion. Let's not dismiss the value to the volunteer either. It has been well documented that there are tremendous health benefits to volunteering, especially among older adults. Studies have shown that active volunteering lowers the likeliness for depression and isolation, provides purpose and meaning to one's life, increases life expectancy, and lowers the rate of heart disease and other chronic illness that can quickly lead for the need of more costly and intensive medical care. But let me stop there and share what you said. You described in your own words the benefits of volunteering. You said, I give back what I already have, repaying the blessings. I hope to change lives for the better. You said, the greatest gift you can give is your time, because when you give your time, you are giving a portion of your life you will never get back. Making a difference in someone's life is what keeps me going each day. You said, do what you love and love what you do. Make a difference that may not change the world, but will change someone else's world. Being older is not fading away to a 55 resort community. It's about continuing to be active and engaged because we all have something we can offer no matter how old we are or what our ability is. I believe it vitally important that our next generation grow up valuing service as an opportunity. And that service becomes an intrinsic piece of who they are. You are in fact making this happen by example through your community service and by your recognition today. In closing, I would like to quote New York's byline, out of many we are one. It is the founding premise and enduring promise that we inherited from our parents and the premise of New York that we pass on to our children. Your work makes New York State a better place to live, work, and grow old. I am proud to be with you today and on behalf of everyone at the State Office for the Aging, the County Offices for the Aging, the Association on Aging in New York State, we say thank you and convey how really proud we are of all of you and the wonderful example that you set for all of us. I am so honored and privileged to now introduce New York's Lieutenant Governor, Brian Benjamin. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin. It is my distinct privilege to join you on Older New Yorkers Day as we celebrate 86 distinguished older adults for their volunteerism. I want to thank Office for the Aging Director, Greg Olson, for hosting this event, recognizing extraordinary people who came through when we needed them the most. New York is fighting this pandemic with everything we've got. Essential workers have gone through great lengths to pull us through. And make no mistake about it, older adult volunteers are part of the select league of extraordinary heroes. Today's honorees devoted their time, talent, care, and compassion to neighbors in need during this extraordinary and unprecedented time. You delivered meals to those who couldn't leave their homes. You drove people to medical appointments so that they can access the right and important, important care. You help people maintain their independence with dignity and respect. And at a moment when so many were feeling lonely, isolated, and scared, you provided friendship and reassurance that there will be better days ahead. Many retired healthcare workers jumped into action, providing pivotal knowledge and support at community vaccination sites. Joyce Hyatt, is one of these exceptional people. A retired nurse practitioner, Joyce volunteered at more than 40 vaccination clinics in Chamon County. She trained volunteers, assisted with screening procedures, and provided on-site medical observation. For those efforts, we congratulate Joyce 
on receiving the Governor's Exemplary Service Award. Well done. To all the honorees, I want to thank you for your selfless contributions and for making us a better New York. Thank you very much. It is my honor now to introduce State Senator Rachel May, who is chair of the Senate Standing Committee on Aging, a staunch supporter of our office and all the work that the counties and their partners do. Hello, I'm Senator Rachel May. As chair of the New York State Senate Committee on Aging, I want to send along my thanks and appreciation to all of the great honorees being recognized for NYSOFA's Older New Yorkers Day on November 5th. This year's event recognizes approximately 90 volunteers. The honorees are older adults who support their peers and others in the community through selfless acts of volunteerism. Each was nominated by their area agency on aging and they represent every region of the state. It's impossible to quantify all the good you do for your communities through your time, dedication, and love. It's been a pleasure to learn about your accomplishments over the last year, such as delivering meals to the homebound, helping neighbors with home repairs, volunteering at vaccination sites, hospital, hospice organizations, or telephone hotlines, serving on emergency response units or volunteer fire departments, fundraising for charitable causes, teaching classes, providing transportation, helping with neighborhood beautification. All these actions make for age-friendly communities help people stay in their homes, keep people healthy and active, and overcome social isolation. During the pandemic, your work has taken on new meaning as the need has been greater than ever. Volunteers age 55 and up contribute almost 500 million hours of community service a year, which adds up to $13.8 billion in economic value and a priceless contribution to people's health and happiness. So thank you all, and a big thanks to, the, to NYSOFA and its energetic and dedicated director, Greg Olson. Together, you make New York a better place to live for people of all ages. And now it is my distinct honor to introduce Assemblymember Ron Kim, who is the chair of the Assembly Standing Committee on Aging, who has unbridled passion for issues surrounding aging and has been a great partner with the New York State Office for Aging. Hi, my name is Ron Kim. As the chair of the Committee on Aging in the State Assembly, I am sending warm greetings and appreciation uh, to Director Greg Olson, his staff, um, and the New York State Office of Aging for putting on another uh, Older Adults Day uh, for the State of New York. This year, we are celebrating over 90 volunteers throughout the entire state for their tremendous contribution to uplift the older adult population, but also support um, the, an, the economy by helping the older adults who have given back to so much back to our state, uh, locally and state, and there's tangible returns um, that impact our state's economy, whether it be their philanthropy or donations or volunteerism. Um, it is intangible. Uh, in, in terms of monetary value, the contribution the older adult population gives to the state of New York. But without the volunteers who put in so many hours to deliver uh, meals uh, to homebound residents, uh, teaching classes for older adults, uh, working directly with social organizations, um, providing um, neighborhoods with beautification projects, uh, volunteering at hospice organization and fundraising for charitable events. The list goes on for what these volunteers do to impact the older adult population for the state of New York. But I also want to be very clear that we shouldn't be inching toward uh, replacing care workers with volunteers. We need to supplement the care sector with people who have time to volunteer and recognize their, their invaluable work. At the same time, we have to pay to all pay uh, every dollar the care workers deserve from home care service to nursing homes uh, and everything else in between. They need any livable wages to make sure that we have a vibrant um, care sector uh, workforce that can truly step up and meet the needs of the older adult 
uh, communities in the state of New York. Um, so between uh, an economy, a caring economy, a truly caring economy uh, that recognizes the importance of volunteers who are giving back and that pays for care work, um, we should be having a vibrant uh, economy in the future that truly values uh, the older adults in the state of New York. Uh, with that, thank you so much um, for all the work that you do. And I look forward to your partnership and collaborating with you in the future. I'm really proud to be able to present the Governor's Exemplary Volunteer Service Award. And a special thanks to John Trice of Chemung County for the drone footage you're about to see. Hello. Hi, I'm looking for Mrs. Joyce Hyatt, please. This is Joyce speaking. Hi, Joyce. Um, I'm going to call you Mrs. Hyatt, if that's okay. My name is Greg Olson. I'm the director of the New York State Office for Aging. Um, yes, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. Excellent. So, look, I was calling for a couple of reasons. So, the first reason was I wanted to congratulate you on being nominated um, for Older New Yorkers Day by Chemung County uh, for your volunteerism and civic engagement. We were all very, very impressed with uh, your, your bio, all the things that you have done over the course of not only your working career, um, but also you know, through the pandemic with the, uh, um, the Medical Reserve Corps and serving you know, over 12,000 residents and helping them get vaccinated, um, you know, developing the health ministry of the Southern Tier. We were just really, really impressed uh, with you and um, you know, what you do for your community. Well, thank you for those comments. Uh, but that's not the real reason I'm calling. That's uh, the secondary reason. The primary reason is that uh, when we get all of the nominations in, we select one person and one person only to get the Governor's Exemplary Service Award. And like I said, we were so impressed with you that you are the person that's going to get that award uh -huh. from Governor Hopeful this year. Oh my gosh, that's just, that's, I'm very honored, thank you. Well, we're, we're really honored to give it to you. I know that people, um, you know, volunteer for a lot of different things to help their community and they don't do it to get uh, praise or a pat on the back, but because they're caring people and your, your bio shows that uh, amazingly, as well as, you know, what your uh, two daughters do for a living and you know New York's gain was Iowa's loss so we appreciate that you moved here in 1986 to uh, you know uh, do that service for your your community so I wanted to personally give you a call and just say congratulations we're so honored to uh, to have you part of this celebration honored to be able to let you know that you're the only person in the state that will receive this special um, recognition and designation from the governor and uh, my staff will be following up with you uh, so that we can do a Zoom interview with you if that's okay. My name is Joyce Hyatt. I live in Big Flats, New York. I want to thank everyone for being here. I'm the mother of three, a uh, retired nurse, retired uh, healthcare administrator, uh, and hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Um, I retired about five years ago and still stayed engaged with the health department. I had a contract with the health department in Chemung County for about 23 years, facilitating the rural health network and also establishing the Medical Reserve Corps after 9-11. Um, I have four grandchildren, three granddaughters who live uh, 10, 10 miles away, so I get to see them often. Uh, and my grandson lives in California, seeing him much less often. Um, and I, I, I find that my family is very important to me. Um, they uh, supported my professional life and uh, support me in doing volunteer work in my retirement. Uh, we took advantage of a facility in Corning uh, to establish our health ministry, but it didn't have access uh, for anyone in a wheelchair. Uh, that building also housed the food pantry. So um, as all volunteers should do, you know, show up, 
do the work. And if you need experts, ask for help. And we were able to construct a ramp that then gave access not only to the health ministry services where we provided uh, health care to those people who were uninsured and could not afford uh, for health services and for the food pantry that prior to the ramp had had to bring the food out to people in their cars. Services and the, um, the help that's provided doesn't all only uh, reward the recipient. It's also a, a great reward for the person doing the volunteering and the giving. There's actually a, a, a your body reacts to kindness and giving. Um, so both people, both parties can benefit from that. Um, another thing about volunteering is for people who are in work lives, professional lives, once you've uh, retired, you have a little more time. And I really encourage people who have been members in organizations, uh, but not able to participate fully because they were working to ramp up your participation. Because in retirement, you have the time to give to those organizations that can then bring resources to people who are currently still working. And now I'm honored to introduce the Association on Aging in New York State's Innovative Volunteer Program Award. Hello everyone, my name is Becky Preeby and I'm the Executive Director of the Association on Aging in New York, representing the 59 offices for the aging throughout New York State. I am so pleased today to announce the Association on Aging's annual award for an innovative volunteer program. This year's recipient is the Community Health Center of the North Country, a federally qualified health center that has determined social isolation and loneliness has a large impact on their acute care patients. In partnership with many community-based organizations throughout the North Country, they have established a community friendship volunteer program that utilizes older residents to provide grocery shopping, transportation, and friendly visiting to a variety of North Country residents on an ongoing basis. This year, we are super excited that they were able to expand to their health center in Ogdensburg in St. Lawrence County and have now expanded the entire program throughout the most rural part of New York State. Congratulations to the Community Friendship Volunteer Program and the Federally Qualified Health Center that sponsors it. My name is Jane Richards and I live in Franklin County. The Community Friendship Volunteer Program is a new, unique program that many of the seniors we assist make too much to qualify for government assistance or home care, but not enough to pay out-of-pocket expenses for the assistance they need to remain independent. Uh, because we are a non-income based program, we can provide these services at no cost to the senior. Most importantly, our volunteers provide social support through their contacts, offering the seniors in our program, many of whom are extremely isolated and lonely, the opportunity for social interaction and companionship. We live in a very rural area and we see time and time again with, with some older adults um, that isolation becomes a problem, which sometimes leads to depression. And uh, we need programs like this to make that connection. How would you describe the effect you think that this pet might have on your life? It's gonna make it good. I like it, you know, I mean, because it'd be something I have in my room and uh, I, you know, I love animals. I don't care for stuff, they're real. I wanted to show how important this is. People are connected to 
animals their whole lives and the difference we've seen this make is great. And now the moment I know you're waiting for and I am as well to introduce the slate of 86 volunteers from across the state. Congratulations to all of you.
In closing out the 2021 Older Americans Month, we'd like to again thank you for joining us. Thank you for all that you do on behalf of your families and your communities. I'd like to thank Governor Hochul, Lieutenant Governor Benjamin, all of our guests today, all of our honorees, the County Offices for the Aging and their partners, the Association on Aging. This is a really important event. We love to highlight the value of older people. If you are watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing. We are constantly adding content that is relevant and of interest to you, and we would love to have you along on the journey. We'll see you in 2022. Thanks again. Stay safe. Get your booster shot if you're eligible, and if you haven't gotten your vaccine yet, please consider doing that.